right. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for all the panelists joining us uh, and everyone across uh, the state. Looks like so far we've got a, a pretty good, robust uh, set of attendees. Um, my name is Joe Marino. I'm the executive director of Veterans Florida. Uh, Veterans Florida is a state created nonprofit which is established to assist transitioning service members and their families. Uh, with economic opportunities, uh, either through careers, skill bridge, or entrepreneurship and agriculture training. We've been around since 2014, um, and uh, we've got a couple members of our team here as well. Uh, Casey is running the back end for us, and Amy will be assisting with Q&A. Um, and uh, some of the Q&A um, that uh, people enter uh, through Zoom um, may be brought up uh, for the panel uh, panelists to answer as well. So if you've got questions, uh, be sure to uh, click that Q&A and, and throw in your question. Amy will either be able to answer them directly or we'll answer them uh, live here as well. Uh, this is being recorded. It will be posted online later, most likely on our YouTube channel and various other social platforms. Um, so you can share it if you find uh, so many, uh, some interesting information for you and uh, fellow veterans um, who need to have this information. So we've got a great lineup. I'm going to go through the names real quick and then we'll do introductions. Um, we've got uh, Terry McCaffrey, Vice President, Mili Military and Defense Programs from Enterprise Florida, and he is a U.S. Air Force veteran. Greg Britton is the Chief Executive Officer of Florida Small Business Development Centers Network throughout Florida. Uh, Nikki Bateman, she is the CEO of Match My Place, uh, U.S. Army veteran, and she was one of our award winners at our June 2022 uh, annual expo. So congratulations, Nikki. Uh, Rafael Camano uh, is the co-founder of the Veterans Entrepreneurship Initiative out of Orlando, uh, and he is a U.S. Army veteran. Uh, and we've got Michael DiNapoli, a director of the Office of Small and Minority Business uh, capital at the Florida Department of Economic Opportunity. So we've got a great lineup. We've got small businesses. We've got large state organizations all here with us today because there's really a lot of resources in Florida for uh, veteran small business owners. Um, before we get going, um, I want to make a quick announcement uh, for those veterans who are interested in co-working um, at a location throughout the state. Uh, you may uh, be uh, uh, currently at a co-working location or are interested in, in what co-working has to offer. Uh, there are so many co-working locations across the state, we can't catalog them all at this moment. But if you have a, uh, a co-working space in mind that you'd like to go to, uh, we are offering uh, a new a uh, co-working uh, scholarship program where uh, we will pay a co-working facility uh, directly $2,000 to cover that portion of membership at that co-working uh, uh, facility throughout the state. So if you've got a location that you're currently co-working at um, or are interested in uh, co-working at, try to gather up as much information because on the application form, we're going to ask you some of some of the features that that co-working uh, place provides, such as 24/7 access, mentorship to local business leaders, etc. Um, you can see all this information on our website at veteransflorida.org/coworking. Again, that's veteransflorida.org/coworking. No hyphens or anything like that. And with that. We'll talk more about that throughout, uh, throughout the uh, uh, webinar, uh, but let's go ahead and start. Uh, we're we're going to offer each of our speakers about five to seven minutes to cover their area, go through their bio, and, and uh, tell us a little bit more about what they do on behalf of uh, Florida's small business veterans during National Small Business National Veterans Small Business Week. And with that, we'll, go, uh, we'll start with uh, Terry McCaffrey. Thanks, Terry, for being with us. Well, I'm, I am Terry McCaffrey, and uh, thank you all for uh, joining this webinar. Hopefully, you get something uh, good out of it. Uh, I'm uh, very sure you will. Um, 
I uh, am the Vice President of Military and Defense Programs for the state of Florida, and as such, my concentration is really on our active duty members, uh, but the connection, obviously, as they're all veterans, uh, is important, as well as all your spouses and dependents that come here that are looking for jobs also. And I think uh, it's important to, uh, to acknowledge the fact that uh, many service members that come to Florida uh, may not be Floridians, but you uh, you get sent here, or or like myself when I was still active duty, get asked you ask to come to a base in Florida because we have such amazing uh, locations. For example, we Pens Pensacola Beach, uh, you know Eglin, Destin Beach, uh, Panama City Beach with Tyndall Air Force Base, Tampa Bay with McDill Air Force Base. Heck, if you want to go to Key West, we have a naval station there. Uh, if you'd like to work in the space industry or be in the Space Coast, we have two Space Force bases there. Uh, and then Jacksonville with multiple naval installations as well as our Air National Guard. Uh, and if you want to be down in the oldest city in the, in the uh, country in St. Augustine, you can even join the Florida National Guard and go down and uh, work right there in our uh, historic headquarters of the Florida National Guard. Uh, heck, if you want to be in the, uh, the entertainment industry uh, hub of the world in Orlando, Florida, you can go to Naval Support Activity Orlando. Um, so I know that many of you veterans either uh, cherished your assignment here or came here. And I know that uh, we also opened our uh, arms wide and welcomed you here. And so every every uh, service member that gets a job in Florida, we want you to either stay here or if you have to take other orders and go someplace else when you're done with your service, we want you to come back. And that's why we want to uh, make sure that we're so opening to you now. Um, my job is to run basically two major organizations that support uh, under the uh, Department of Economic Opportunity and EFI. Uh, are the Florida Defense Support Task Force and the Florida Defense Alliance. The Defense Alliance works with local communities around installations uh, to help with issues with uh, family support, uh, education, housing, any of those kind of issues that you're having to deal with in the communities uh, around the installations. And they bring those issues up to the Florida Defense Support Task Force, which is a legislatively mandated uh, organization uh, made up of appointees by the governor, the House, and the Senate. Uh, and we take up those issues and have uh, a budget where we have a grant program uh, that also kind of uh, matches up against DEO's grant program to support uh, the communities around our installations. Uh, and another thing we do that uh, you should know about if you're a veteran in Florida uh, is not just the veterans guide uh, that is put out by the Department of Veteran Affairs for uh, benefits, but also our uh, that specifically relates to you as a as a service member of your families. And this is the uh, it's called Advantage Florida Military Benefits Guide. You can get this on our website. If you're around in installation, you can get one at, uh, at your uh, CVPO, your base uh, consolidated office. They'll have copies there. Um, but uh, if you can't find it anywhere else, ask us and I'll get you a link to it. Uh, it's a great summary of all the different uh, laws that the state of Florida has passed that support you as a military member and your spouse and your dependents uh, while you're serving. And then obviously there's more things even uh, that go into you as a veteran. Uh, the last thing I'll talk about is is the obvious connection to defense industry and uh, supporting of the installations as well as all the different uh, assets that are here in Florida. Um, if you're a, a Florida uh, service member, you're probably either in the Navy or the or the Air Force because we're largely an Air Force and Navy state. Um, so uh, that's shipbuilding, that's aerospace, that's uh, space itself on the Space Coast and space industry. So huge amounts of different opportunities uh, to, uh, to continue even as a veteran uh, when you come out of the service to continue supporting those services uh, and the assets that, uh, that you used to work on, keep working on them here in uh, Florida. So thanks for the uh, opportunity to say a few words and I'd be happy to answer questions as that comes up uh, about anything we can do to help. Thanks. Thank you, Terry. Uh, next, we'll hear from uh, Greg Britton. Thanks, Joe. Can you guys see my screen there? So I'm sharing some slides. All right, awesome. Um, Greg Britton, I'm the state director of the Florida Small Business Development Center Network. Um, welcome um, to the webinar. And again, I hope everybody gets something out of this. It's great. Um, we're, we're, a, um, we're hosted by the University of West Florida. Um, that's where our state office is at. 
And you can see by the map there, we have a partnership with universities and EDOs across the state. So we are broke up into, broken up into nine regions. We cover all the way from Pensacola to Jacksonville to the Florida Keys. And again, you can see those regions there. And um, we have about 250 employees working across the state to help our small businesses launch, grow, and thrive. Um, we do have 40 plus offices. So no, those offices aren't shown there on that map, of course, but um, our goal is to get within one hour of any um, you know, small business that needs assistance. That's changed just a little bit over time just because of COVID and the virtual capabilities we have now. Um, it's, it's so easy to connect virtually. Um, so what do we do at the Florida Small Business Development Center Network? Um, we provide one-on-one -on -one consulting, training, and research to help, again, our small businesses launch, grow, and thrive. Um, what do we help with our, from a veteran's perspective in that startup sphere? Um, we can look at you know, the feasibility of your idea, um, do some research around that idea and give you some tips there on that. We can help you maybe access some capital. Um, we can help you um, with a business plan to make sure you're, you know, you understand where you're starting today and where you're going in the future. And um, we also, um, I think it's uh, warranted to also say we have some franchising folks on staff that are um, specialists in franchising. Now, I'm not going to say we have in, in every region across the state, but that is the uniqueness of our SBDC here in Florida. We are the largest continuous SBDC in the nation. Um, and what that allows us to do is share, um, you know, ideas and consulting consultants around the state as necessary. Um, we help with existing businesses get government contracts through our SBA um, partner and um, our, our, our PTAC, our Procurement Technical Assistance Centers, as well. And um, and then again, access that capital that you need. Uh, I always like to tell a success story about like one of our clients, and I want you to meet John Burns here. He is um, the founder of Eagle Six Technical Services, LLC. Uh, John is a retired Army colonel, um, veteran of our, of our state. Uh, he has a business that is uh, specialized in cybersecurity, command, control, logistics, and maintenance systems. Uh, John came to the U the SBDC at US, excuse me, UCF and uh, needed some help in growing his business. So we helped him with some market research. We helped him with business training seminars and he attended a lot of our workshops that are also out there for free. And we, we put a lot of workshops on throughout the year in all of our regions, um, whether that's starting a business or just other specific workshops. And he also wanted assistance with um, employee hiring, um, insurance, workers comp, uh, payroll and benefits. Um, you know, that isn't entirely our specialty, but we also can connect you to those individuals and to including that hidden workforce that's so much needed today in our in our community. So, um, but today, John has a multi-million dollar business and very successful. So, um, I'll, you know, if you have any questions, again, I'll take those questions um, later on here um, as they come up. But also, if you're wanting to find out where a local uh, small business development center is near you, um, I would encourage you to go to floridasbdc.org forward slash locations and uh, find an SBDC near you. Thank you very much, Greg. Um, yeah, SBDC, uh, the Florida SBDC is, is uh, just a, um, a gold mine of information and technical assistance for any small business and particularly veterans and the PTAC for those that are interested in federal government contracting, the PTAC's a great office to help uh, veteran small businesses uh, understand that labyrinthine uh, process. Uh, now we, uh, we turn to Nikki Bateman, CEO of Match My Place. Nikki, floor is yours. Wonderful. So again, my name's Nikki Bateman. I am uh, an Army veteran. I was a signals intelligence analyst. Uh, Match My Place uh, was founded in February of 2021. Uh, I'm also a licensed real estate agent. I have been since 2013. And we developed a privacy-centric real estate platform and brokerage that allows consumers to market their property to the public while still preserving their privacy, which is specifically the physical location of their property. Uh, and this came from things that were happening uh, out in the world in the US. Um, so we're geared towards first responders, police officers, uh, firefighters, nurses, 
public servants as well. So those are politicians, judges, public defenders, corrections officers. And then we like to say those other protected classes, those who are victims of um, crimes and, and possibly abuse. So we have partnered with uh, one of the largest privately held real estate companies, Keller Williams, and we are rolling out in the state of Florida. And right now we're working with a little over a thousand agents and they're testing our system, using it as a value add to their current real estate customers. I'll, I'll try to add the resources that I've used a little bit. Um, I'm a UCF business incubation program candidate. So I've been in the program for almost a year now. I'm also a, a VEI graduate. And again, we've linked up with Veterans Florida. And yes, we did win the bronze um, pitch competition uh, this summer. Thank you, Nikki. And that is a great segue. Uh, into uh, Raphael. Please uh, introduce yourself and uh, tell us how your resources assist veteran small businesses. Thank you, Joe, and thank you everyone for participating in this event. As you can see, there's a lot of help, um, so feel free to reach, to reach out to one of us. Um, before I jump uh, on our story real quick, I just want to recognize that uh, John Byrne from Eagle Six actually was in one of our first class in 2017, thanks to Veterans Florida. And from there, he went on, went on to take advantage of the great uh, services from the SBDC. So the, the point that I'm trying to make is all about collaboration and, and fostering innovation between all these agencies. So uh, I would love to see more of that. And I think that's happening, at least in Central Florida. So we are, we are a big uh, champion of that. Um, VEI started as a passion project in 2013 under UCF, and the reason for that is because there, was a, there were a lot of um, veterans coming back from Afghanistan, and as you, some of you may know um, or may have experienced, transitioning is tough, and sometimes once we look, once we give up that, that purpose or of that mission of service, we kind of get lost in the weeds, especially in the civilian life because of the, the way everything is structured. So after reading a book, Startup Nation, um, it was like a, 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 motiv a, a motivation factor for us to, you know what, why can't veterans in the U.S. do more, right, or, or be, some, be more, right? And so we started meeting with veterans Thursdays, Thursdays and Saturdays, volunteering our time, and then we met with Veterans Florida. So right now we are uh, basically a spoke of Veteran Florida and we provide, we support Veterans Flo Florida with uh, entrepreneurial services. So we, uh, we have cohorts throughout the year. This year we have done seven cohorts and our cohorts are divided in two ways. One for veterans with the idea and they don't know what to do with that idea. So we have a methodology that we take them through for them to build a business model, not a business plan, a business model. Once they build that business model, we typically recommend them to the SPDC or other agencies to provide uh, additional support. And we meet with them one-on-one -on -one, uh, for at least a year. The second cohort is for, it's called Scale Up. And those are, um, that, that's, a, that's a, a cohort for companies that are better known companies. They've been in business, they have traction, but for some reason they hit a plateau. They're not going anywhere. So we conduct uh, an assessment. It's about 20 minute assessment. We identify weaknesses and then we create a plan for the next 12 months and we work on that plan until they graduate or finish that. In between, we provide them with a tool free of charge where they can keep us accountable and we can keep them accountable and we can collect data and provide them with tools. Um, so that's what we do uh, in between cohorts. We have special programming right now as, as I'm speaking to all of you. We have a, a, an event going on, uh, storytelling, how to how to structure your story, right? So you can have a better impact when you deliver your story. And uh, last week or two weeks ago, we have one on how to build your, build your pitch. And in December 3rd, we have our next cohort for scale up. Companies are already out there generating funding, but they, they, they wanna grow and scale. So that's basically what we do. Uh, we're located in Orlando, but we do provide support throughout the state, thanks to Zoom and, and, and Google Meet. So. Uh, we're here to help, so feel free to reach out. Thank you, Rafael. And 
we have next uh, Michael. Please uh, tell us. I think you have some interesting updates from the state you'd like to tell everybody about. I sure do. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, Joe, and thank you everybody for being here. Um, so. Uh, my name is Mike DiNapoli. I'm the Director of Small Business Capital here uh, for the state of Florida uh, within DEO, the Department of Economic Opportunity. And I want to highlight um, two things, actually. I only have a few slides, but I want to highlight a few things, um, in particular, uh, the most important, I believe, to our veteran community and to all of our service members here uh, in Florida looking to start businesses. We have a, an amazing tool, an amazing loan program to help small businesses. I love speaking at these um, at these events, uh, having Greg and and he and I kind of piggyback each other on a lot of these because we, we work. There's a lot of uh, symbiotic relationships between what we do with this loan program and what Greg does for small businesses. So it's wonderful that they could get in and they talk to businesses how to start a business, how to write a business plan, how to get yourself or your business ready to receive capital. Uh, and that's where uh, I come in, we come in with one of our loan programs that I'd like to highlight. So in particular, it's something called the State Small Business Credit Initiative. So this is a, uh, a loan program that was authorized back, originally authorized back in 2010, reauthorized in 2021 in response to COVID. Um, it is a, uh, in Florida, it's a $500 million loan program that we've been allocated. It's an extremely large and complex loan program, but I do want to kind of simplify it for all of our veterans and all of the uh, folks listening in. You can read here simply what it is. There's a website, floridajobs.org slash SSBCI, where you can find more information. But let me just tell you why I think it's important with so many businesses here in Florida, so many businesses, business owners and businesses moving to the state of Florida uh, because of the environment because of um, we are a business friendly state. Here is what businesses are eligible, who's eligible. Uh, and you can read uh, these on your own, it's on our website, but what borrowers, what type of borrowers, the purpose of the loan program and what it can be used for. Um, the next slide I wanna uh, leave up here for a little bit, uh, inside of this loan program that US Treasury has authorized, there's carve outs for um, veteran owned or, or veteran uh, majority owned businesses. And you can see here <clears throat> what constitute a veteran owned or veteran controlled business. And it's real simple, 51% is really the key number. If you are a, a business and 51% of your business is owned by a veteran, uh, you are eligible for that carve out that treasury has allocated to us within our overall allocation. So there's something called inside of this, and, and I certainly don't want to get too deep into it, but uh, the veteran status within the carve out is defined by US Treasury own, uh, under what is called socially and economically disadvantaged. So I want to leave this up here for everybody to look at and just um, kind of take it in and, and, and understand why we feel it's important that we really speak to this veteran community uh, to get them to utilize this loan program. We, we really want to push this uh, to those socially and economically disadvantaged wherever they are in the state. Uh, as Terry had mentioned, uh, there's so many places that they can live and enjoy uh, and, and grow their business in Florida. Um, I think it's important that we really highlight those veterans and, and really help them get access to capital. One other thing I wanted to mention, and it's my next slide, which is a technical assistance grant program inside of the SSBCI program. Uh, Florida has been allocated $13 million for a technical assistance grant, which we have recently applied for. Uh, and it provides very simple legal services, accounting service, and financial advisory service, three very important aspects to owning a business. So we're excited to have that and excited to be able to roll that out sometime soon when Treasury um, uh, approves our plan, and, and hopefully they will, uh, and roll that out throughout the state. It's going to be statewide. Technical assistance, in my opinion, is extremely important. And, and Greg, you know, we talk about this all the time, extremely important to help not just start a business, but also continually grow the business or continually um, have success in that business. And, and, and I don't think that happens often enough. You go and, and get a loan from a commercial lender or a bank or community, um, uh, community lender or credit union, 
um, they give you the funds and, and it's up to you to try and uh, make your business successful. There are so many resources here, and this is a perfect example of the resources that are available and really at no charge to help your businesses succeed. So please take advantage of it. Look for this information on our website. Um, it's really a useful tool. One last slide I wanted to show, which we, uh, we currently have. Uh, Greg knows all about it. He was instrumental in helping us get this uh, loan fund up and running here at DEO. It's called the Rebuild Florida Business Loan Fund. We actually retitled it. It's the Small Business Loan Fund, Revolving Loan Fund. It's got a couple of different names, but it's currently used. We've been, we've been lending for the last two years. It's $50 million that we have in total. Uh, and I encourage people to learn more about that um, it is not focused specifically on veterans, but we do have a lot of veterans that have come in and we've, we've made loans to. Um, and I, I wanted to highlight it because of the, so, the, the amount of service members we have up in the panhandle. And we have uh, 10 million of our $50 million uh, is dedicated specifically to the tw uh, 13 counties in the panhandle that were hit after Hurricane Michael. Um, so if you are in the panhandle, you are a veteran up there, please take a look at that. We'd like to talk to you. Here's the link, here's the, I know it's kind of a quirky website and I'm happy to make these slides available. Uh, if you go to our website, uh, floridajobs.org, you can find all of the great information that we have out there for uh, capital for, for veterans. So with that, I will turn it back to you, Joe. Great, thank you. Uh, incredible amount of information in a, in a short amount of time. So uh, what we're gonna do is uh, for those folks who did present slides, if you could email those into us, we are going to package sort of a post uh, webinar um, resource uh, guide for folks, uh, attendees who participated um, and we'll include it on our website uh, most likely as well. So if you can send us that, um, we, we'll include uh, the, the personal information, uh, well not personal, the personal, or the, rather the, <laughs> the contact information uh, of our uh, panelists uh, as well, if you had any specific questions about their programs or may need any speci uh, special assistance. Um, and we'll include the links uh, that uh, Michael just mentioned and, and some of the other folks have, uh, have included in, in theirs as well. So the, the quick and easy access. So uh, we do have some cues in the uh, Q&A that we will uh, uh, begin going through a little bit. And we've also got some uh, questions I wanted to kick off the conversation with if our panelists are ready. So this is kind of the go-to, this is kind of the, the, the low hanging fruit but uh, I, I, I always love to ask it because it, uh, it really reinforces why these programs exist for veterans uh, who are interested in small business. Uh, so let's start with uh, what traits panelists uh, make veterans excellent small business owners? Can I take that or? Go for it. Yeah, so that's one of the reasons honestly, that veterans are more likely to start a business and, and they have a higher prob probability of being successful than others. And it's because they have, they have a mission-driven mentality, they have the tenacity, they have the perseverance, attention to detail, and they're team-oriented. And those are traits that are very difficult for a small or a, a recently graduate uh, engineer to, to have or someone that just enter into the business without that, that business degree or experience. So Veterans are ahead of the game when it comes to having the, the right traits to, to be in business or start a business. I, I got a couple of other attributes, I think. I, I think they also work not just in teams, but very diverse teams. I mean, I think the, the military is an uh, extremely diverse organization, um, and, it, uh, and, and in not just uh, easy problem sets that they've had to deal with. Um, and so they've been a lot, probably most of them, all over the world dealt in uh, different cultures, uh, different countries, different uh, environments. And, uh, and then, as he's mentioned, mission focus. Yeah, but the, uh, the, not just a, uh, hey, we, we'd like to do this. It's we're going to do this uh, mentality. So it is a, uh, a get it done mentality. Uh, and, and really, not, I'm not going to be set back. I'm going to succeed. Um, and so that drive is uh, pretty huge. And uh, we see that in all the veterans, uh, all the veterans that I have working for me here at Enterprise Florida, as well as uh, every place else I've been, we see that uh, that mentality. I agree. And I, I think adaptability 
is huge. Uh, the, the ability to uh, adjust on the fly, um, always seeking information and new information uh, and, and uh, being able to adjust where necessary. Greg, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say something very similar to that, Joe, but also add on to that, that, um, you know, they've seen a lot in their career real quick as far as systems and different environments. So, you know, as they're going through their daily mission, they find ways that they may be able to make something better um, in what they currently do or have done. Um, so, you know, they have this business idea coming out that, hey, I could, I could make this a business if I did this kind of service or this kind of product or whatever. And then I'll say also a lot of times the veteran comes out, well, the veteran does come out with some benefits, which, um, you know, just as a normal individual um, coming out of high school or college, they have no benefits yet and they don't have anything to fall back on. So you're in a perfect position to already start your business. So. Mm -hmm. Nikki, what, uh, what traits have helped you from, uh, from your time in the service? So I, I love this question because um, <clears throat> when I joined the military and I, I did it at a really great point in my life, um, right out of college, uh, what am I going to do when I grow up sort of thing? And I would say the one thing that has served me throughout my entire life, but specifically um, from being an entrepreneur is being resilient, addressing failure, adapting to it. And then getting up the next day and moving on because I have learned and I, and I, I learned that's the best lesson I learned from the military is when you think there's nothing left, it's yourself, the mission and your team that drives you just a little bit forward. And that little bit forward difference is usually the difference between failure and success. So knowing that failure is embedded in anything that is successful and being able to be resilient enough and rely on those around you to still be successful. Ooh, ah. All right. Um, so what industries in Florida, uh, you know, we've got a lot of folks here on the call that are on the ground, so to speak. What industries are we seeing particular veteran service uh, owned businesses growth in? Are, is, are there particular industries or a industry that, that we're seeing a particular spike in, or is it more across the board? Uh, I, I'm seeing, and uh, we, we've had, I've been to several groundbreakings lately, uh, Jacksonville uh, at Cecil Field uh, and Pensacola Airport, and now just through, just last week, we announced uh, Dassault Aviation in uh, the Space Coast in Melbourne, I believe. Uh, so I would say uh, aviation industry is, is obviously uh, expanding in Florida, mostly MRO, so maintenance. So I know we have a lot of... Uh, veterans in Florida with aviation maintenance backgrounds. Uh, and I can tell you that there, uh, there are a lot of jobs available for you if you want to stay in aviation maintenance uh, and, and transition straight over. For, for building your own business, uh, shoot, the supply chain, right? So how, how do you uh, support all those industries that you've already been involved with and uh, figure out how to support them better? Um, so yeah, I think that that industry, I've seen a, a big big spike in the last uh, maybe a year and a half. The, I think the reason why I mentioned the franchising originally in my comments was we we actually added some franchising folks who we did see a lot of military um, individuals want to come out and, and do the franchising thing. Uh, these are kind of given a playbook and they can execute by the playbook, right? So that's why we did what we did there. Hey, Joe, in Orlando, we we have a big industry when it comes to simulation. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of uh, veteran-owned companies supporting that effort. But lately, we've seen a peak on cybersecurity. A lot of the veteran active duty personnel leaving the military and starting their own consulting firms in support of those companies that are providing support to DOD. So <laughs> it's like a chain link effect. And it's very neat to see those folks uh, uh, because of the lack of professionals out there providing that cybersecurity support these companies are growing very fast and they're actually hiring too all the time. So I would, uh, I would jump on Raphael's comments with that because it's, and it's not just the uh, Orlando or the high tech corridor between uh, uh, Tampa all the way to the space coast, but it's uh, shoot the panhandle. Uh, most people don't know Pensacola area is a hub for, uh, for cybersecurity. In fact, the, the Navy uh, 
Warfare Center for, for uh, Cyber Warfare is there. Um, so there is a huge amount all over the state of Florida uh, for cyber. That's a really good point. Well, it, that actually leads to uh, one of the other questions um, that we sort of had prepped. Uh, because I think uh, Florida has a robust uh, supply chain um, mm -hmm. uh, sub-industry, so to speak. So uh, to, to become a supplier to these larger corporations or, or the state even, uh, and Nikki has some experience with this, so working, uh, working with a large uh, company. Um, how do veterans tap into those? Is it simply by networking? Are there other methods to tap into these, to establish themselves as a supplier to these larger companies? What's, uh, what's our thoughts on that? Uh, let me, st the first thing is, have you talked to your PTAC officer? That's the first question that I, that I, I throw at them, right? You got to make sure you hit on, you got your stuff on SAM, you have your SBA profile done, Nate codes, everything, you got your capability statement. But I think in short, Joe, all of, all of above, I mean, you have to network a lot and it's all about relationship too, and being, being set in this, in the right set of databases. So you can, Somebody is looking for a vendor. Your your name and company's there. No, yeah, I, 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 can... I, I was just gonna say I'd echo the PTAC thing, right? Because the procurement technical assistance um, centers are there to help you with um, government contracting. That doesn't need necessarily mean federal government contracting. That can be local. That can be state. That could be again federal. But also think about too as a veteran and a, even if it's a service disabled veteran owned small business there's also certifications out there that you can get to be qualified for certain set asides for that 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 individual or and there's also women owned small business as well certification so that we can help you with that through the SBDC or the PTAC so. and I, I can talk a little bit about uh, working with large private companies um, first of all is, is no Know, know your company, company's mission, who you serve, and how you can be a complement to that larger organization. And that's about knowing that organization as well. What is their culture? What is their structure? Who are their primary customers? And how can you serve those customers as well as their primary customers' customers? And knowing that messaging chain. And uh, my, one of my favorite Wayne Gretzky, Gretzky uh, quotes is, you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. It's ask, ask for help, ask for who else can help you. And if you keep moving in that and believing in what your business is and your idea is, you will find people that want to help you grow your business. Mm -hmm. Well, that is that is fantastic. Because I think you know a lot of small businesses <clears throat> don't always understand that the, those opportunities are available to tap into uh, being a supplier for a larger company. Um, and uh, uh, I know uh, a lot of corporations have uh, separate departments to assist suppliers, um, not necessarily mentor, maybe mentoring is involved as well, but uh, the, you know, the, the, the larger companies understand they, you know, they can't make everything and they, they rely on small businesses uh, a lot for those uh, helping them accomplish their mission. All right, let's Joe, go. Joe, yes, Joe, yes, can go I ahead. Add something else because some, some some of the veterans always miss this. You don't need to be a primary contract or a, a primary to get a contract. You may want to start as a sub, right? And so, you know, partner with a company that already has a federal contract or government contract and see if you can sub contract with them. That way you, they can build credibility and past performance because at the end of the day, it's all about have you have you done have you worked with the federal government before or any state or or county or municipality and if so how big is the contract and and so on and so on so you want to build that reputation before you become a primary contract contractor. All right, one of the questions from our Q and A, um, and this could uh, this could go to Greg or anybody. Uh, what website do you use to buy a franchise? Learn to start a business uh, and uh, who should be on your team? Well, I can answer part of that for sure. Um, I'm not sure what website to go to buy a franchise. I think that the consultants in our network would probably know more about where you can go find those details than myself as the state director. 
But, um, you know, I, I think that you would first start at that FloridaSPDC.org website I talked about. That will get you to the right location for a consultant um, in your region. And then um, that you'll be assigned the consultant that best fits the opportunity you're looking for, right? And, and we have specialists. I mean, a lot of these consultants that are on our team, um, they're, they're very passionate about what they do. They're dedicated. They live in their communities. They want to see the, their communities, uh, you know, grow and thrive. Uh, but they were also... Um, have been business owners themselves or um, you know, banking CEOs or whatever. So there, there's truly experts on staff that can help you with all that. So when you're saying build that team, I think that SPDC can help you build that team for an access to capital specialist, a franchise specialist, a government contract specialist. And I think to Raphael's point um, earlier, you know, when you talk to the PTAC, it doesn't necessarily mean federal, state, or local. It also means Lockheed Martin, Boeing, uh, Raytheons of the world, those types of folks as well can help you with those types, types of plans. So, uh, that, That's a good lead into a, a, a question I, I wanted to ask Raphael. What are, what are the benefits to veteran small businesses uh, of seeking training, of, of accessing the resources at local entrepreneur support organizations? Veterans are typically very independent, very go it alone a lot of times. But what what are the benefits to reaching out to a Veterans Florida or a Veterans Entrepreneurship Initiative or an SBDC, um, as Greg was talking about, building those external resources as part of their team? So let me start with this. Although we have great traits to be entrepreneur, we also lack on certain areas like networking like marketing and sale and why because you're in the mil when you're in the military everything is given to you you don't have to worry about payroll you don't have to worry about ordering supply i mean buying supplies right you have a unit supporting you so so is it is very essential and crucial for veterans to 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 meet with companies like organizations like veteran florida ptac officer and the spdc because we speak the language and we can connect uh much better and fast track you to that next uh that next point or goal in your life. So look at us as an air traffic control tower. But honestly, the Veteran Florida is a great uh, organization because from there you can get various type of help. Uh, in Orlando, you call us and we are your air traffic controller and we'll send you to whichever organization may better fit you, fit, uh, fit for you or better you're better aligned with. Um, at the end of the day, it's all about relationship and, and your willingness to, to be coachable and, and, and accept help. But you have it start with you it's all it's, it's all about you right so you have to be ready committed and um there's help out here so reach out great uh we had one interesting question um can we get a uh, sorry wrong one actually yes we will send a list of emails of the folks on the panels uh but there was uh, someone had a question about a recommended books so i'll start um, the one that we recommend uh, highly is All in Startup. It is a fantastic book. It nails home the idea for those in the idea and startup phase of their business. Um, do I even have a business or do I have a hobby? Um, the book itself is all about customer discovery. Um, talking to customers beyond you know, your standard market research pie charts, you know, anybody can buy those, you know, there, yeah, there's a million pools in Florida. That doesn't mean they're all going to buy your, you know, your floaty or whatever. You got to get out there and talk to the customers. Uh, the customers are going to tell you if you have a, 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 an idea or a business that is worth uh, their, their cash. Um, it teaches you the idea of the pivot as well. So my, my book recommendation would be all in startup if you're in that part. And frankly, if you're really in any part of, uh, of the business uh, life cycle, um, startup, growth, maturity, because there are questions in there. You know, even if you've got an established business, you might be starting a new project. Is that new project going to have customers? So I think the idea of customer discovery never, never really stops. It's something that is always going to be with you. And I see Raphael nodding his head. So let's, uh, yeah. please, please uh, tell us your thoughts too. Oh, it's a great book for val teaching you how to validate that idea so you don't waste time and money. 
It is a very different book. <clears throat> it does, it's not your typical business book. That's how to get used to it. But it's a great, great book. I, I, yeah, I agree with you, Joe. That's a great, great book to start reading, especially if you're thinking about going into business. Cool. All right. Does anybody else have any interesting? Uh, yes, please, Nikki. So I have three. Um, okay. <laughs> I would say my first one would be start with why. And this is an all over book. It, it's yep. Simon Sinek. Um, how to get to the why of, of what you're doing and why you're doing it. I guarantee it will um, it will get you through those difficult days and help you form your message. Um, another one is the Miracle Morning. Those of us who are entrepreneurs and may have more than one vocation, it's more about efficiency. And that's Hal Elrod. And then uh, I got this one from Raphael is the business model generation. It's a handbook and it'll walk you through the individual models, not only knowing the model of your business, uh, what your customer journey is through your business. So I have one too, Joe. Please. Maybe, maybe Terry knows uh, all about it. Uh, Major General Richard Haddad, Air Force retired general, wrote a book on relationships. I thought, um, when I heard he wrote a book, he's probably got it right there behind him. There you go. <laughs> leadership. Yeah. Leadership. And, and it talks all about relationships and how to be successful in cultivating and, and, and maintaining relationships within your, your industry, your business. I, I thought it would uh, be useful for this and especially veterans trying to start a business. I thought it was a, a, a good read. Uh, and that brings up a great point because uh, it, it kind of going back to what Raphael was talking about, um, uh, the networking, you know, as, as veterans, we're not used to bragging about ourselves. That's why even on the career side of what we do, it's it's hard to sometimes help someone do a good interview because that's, you know, in an interview, you're talking about all about yourself. But when you're in the military, it's usually my team does, my team did. Um, and so networking on the entrepreneurship side is kind of your, you know, sort of the same thing. It's kind of a, you're, you're presenting yourself, you're presenting your resume, whether you go to a networking event or, or some kind of business conference. Um, and that that is that is such a, a a foreign concept to a lot of veterans. But you know, and it, but it, at the same time, it ties into the whole idea of it's all who you know, right? Um, so networking helps everyone build that it's all who you know. Um, it's not going to happen um, necessarily on LinkedIn, but LinkedIn can feed that. So if you're if you're heavy on social media networking online, you got to take that out into the real world as well. You got to break out of your comfort zone. You got to you got to find those people who are going to be your it's who you know um, part of your story for your business. Um, so and that's all about relationship building. So thank you for br uh, bringing up that book as well. All right. Um, any other book suggestions? If you're in business, you got to get traction. That EOS, EOS methodology, that's a that's a very good book too. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, here's an interesting question to the panel: What type of financing is available to a veteran in the service industry, such as a professional counselor, counselor, a software builder, uh, etc.? Any thoughts on, on that? So I can answer that. Um, we like to look at all types of businesses, even if you're um, the only employee. Uh, you may need some capital to start your business. We can help with that. If you need capital to grow your business, we can we can help with that. Uh, and as a counselor, certainly your clients, uh, you need to build clients. How do you do that? Marketing, outreach, we can help with that. We can help with uh, loans as low as $25,000 on our small business loan fund. Um, and that might be enough just to start your business. So uh, if you have an idea, if you have, uh, if you have uh, a business plan, certainly present that, go to the SBDC, they can help you build that out and we can help get that loan funded. We actually, Greg likes to talk about success stories and I can go on for hours on success stories. We helped a young girl who had just graduated from Santa Fe College by a van, a non-emergent um, transportation van uh, in a very poor community in Hillsborough County. And she repaid, it was I think 50 or $60,000. She repaid it within nine months. 
uh, grew her business, grew her contract business, and she came. I, I don't know, Greg. We'd have to ch check to see if she came to the SBDC, but I know she went to SBA and got a much larger loan. She now has six vans. Wow! So sometimes it starts small, and and just getting that that push and 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 the help and the assistance that they need. Um, it, it's all it takes. So we're we're happy to help and we're happy to to talk. <clears throat> Yo, I would like yeah, to add some, I would like to add that before you entertain the idea of going and getting a loan, make sure your credit score square away. A lot of people think, well, this is a business loan. No, it's your credit. <laughs> so make sure you get with a credit repair company or someone uh, with reputation and 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 take care of that first, um, and and see if you can get money uh, from friends and family first before you commit yourself to a loan. Um, and then there are some micro lending out there, which are, has, they have great reputation. Um, so look for those two. I, I've, I've got another question. So uh, it kind of leads a little bit into some of uh, the, the recent uh, topics. Uh, so uh, we, we preach lean startup, which uh, is heavily anchored on the business model canvas. So from a, from a definitional standpoint, you know, uh, everyone's generally familiar with the the business plan, the 30, 40 page business plan. Um, there's also the business model canvas. Uh, who, uh, uh, Raphael, maybe you can start. Uh, what's what's the difference between the two? What purposes does each serve? Because they both serve two very different purposes. Um, how about it, please? <laughs> so Joe, Joe, very simple. I write a business plan and I think I'm going to start making money tomorrow and it doesn't work out. Why it didn't work out? Well, I didn't validate it, right? So the business model canvas give you the opportunity to study that plan before you commit yourself and execute. So it takes about 10 different variations of business model canvas for you to discover what your customer really, really want, right? So are you solving a headache or are you solving a migraine, right? Once you establish that, then write a business plan. Well, don't write a business plan when you don't even know if they're going to buy from you. You don't even have an agreement with your strategic partners or anything like that. I think that's a waste of time. Business plans are, are important, but you need to test and validate before you execute a business plan. That's, my, that's that a too. different. I'm sorry, Joe. Uh, I'm Raphael. Um, Joe, if I could add to that. Yeah, go ahead. The young lady I just referenced. The reason, one of the primary reasons that our underwriter provided that loan was her business plan. She had a 15 page business plan. It was incredibly um, drawn out. It was very thought out. Um, it might not, a lot of it was based off of pro forma, which is a lot of these business plans are, but it, it was very well thought out. It, it really was. And, and uh, as Raphael said, you know, uh, it validated and, and she did a really good job in validating that it would work and it did. Um, some of the programs that we have that we ask for a business plan. It doesn't have to be 25, 30 pages. It doesn't, it really doesn't, it, it, but it has to be thought out and it has to put, you got to put some thought into it. We've taken business plans that are a page and a half, two pages, and that might be all it takes to validate what you're trying to do for the business that you have. So again, it, it make sure you get the assistance that you need. I, I, and, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm just throwing Greg, you know, tons of work, which he, he certainly can handle, but it, it, it's so important to get that professional help. It really is. Mm -hmm. And get that service and get the right consultant to help you. I know it sounds silly that you need to help have somebody help you, but um, you know, at some point you, you, in your business career, you're, you're going to ask for it multiple times. So it's there, take it. And yeah, it's, free. It's, it's free, right, Greg? It's, it's, it's no cost. It's exactly right. And, um, you know, thank, thanks to the SBA, I say it's a no cost. Our, our taxpayer dollars do fund it, right? right. But it, it comes to program through the SBA. But, um, yeah, and, you know, I'll say that, you know, when you're in business um, and you're thinking about this business, you know, it, you're going to make mistakes. That's that's a part of it, right? Um, it's it's how, the, how bad those mistakes are and how successful you are and how you react to those mistakes. And, you know, a lot of these consultants have that experience. They've already made that mistake. They've already been there. They've done that. So they can kind of steer you um, in a direction of success and, and navigating those waters. So, um, you know, to, to what you're trying to do. And I think it's a very good point. Um, you know, you don't need a 30 page business plan. It might need, you know, it might only need a two page business plan, but getting that help up front and understanding what you're trying to achieve in the end and being very honest about what you're trying to achieve, because what we found as well 
as a lot of individuals um, are afraid to admit maybe they made a mistake or they're afraid to, uh, that they might look dumb or you know stupid or whatever, right? But just be tr dead honest uh, where you need to go and what you're trying to do because that's the best way you're going to get that plan and the right package for you, um, whether that's a personal financial statement, all those things we've already talked about to help you get that capital or whatever you're trying to achieve. So. And Joe, I would like to add that there are various type of business plans. So if you're going after a lender, you got to make sure that you tell that to the SBDC so they can properly align you with what they're looking for. Um, so I just want to throw that out there because sometimes people say, I have a business plan, but it's very generic and doesn't have a lot of financials and things like that. Right. Certain business plans for certain purposes. Yeah. And if I can uh, kind of chime in as a going through the business model plan and the business model canvas journey, it is a journey. And uh, when you guys say it's free, it's not pain free, certainly, <laughs> because you are going to and, and through and when I say, you know, tapping into the resources of VEI, because that's the first time that I had seen it. Uh, it, it's a journey. It's a journey of, do you understand your business? Do you understand your core competencies? Do you understand your customer? And sort of giving up the, could I be wrong? You open yourself up to what other opportunities. We started with a very small, a, a big opportunity, a, a, a great concept, yet a small idea of what our company could do. And going through that build, business model canvas has given us an opportunity to open up our services to other um, other top segments that we wouldn't have thought of. Now, we're not attacking them all at once, yet um, as we're going through this partnership, we're realizing and be able to say to our partners that this is what else it can do as we grow. So that, that business model canvas and then being able to take all of those individual capabilities and encapsulate those in a solid uh, business plan document for those individual purposes has been great, but we've really been able to discover how how quickly we can pivot and how we can scale our business. Fantastic. Well, before we jump off, I want to see um, I want to see if any of the panelists have a question for any of the other panelists. I have, I, I have a comment. Michael, thank you for sharing your information. I, I was not aware of the of your programming for lending. I think it's very important. And I'm looking forward to get your PowerPoint presentation so we can distribute it through our channels. Thank you. Hey, Drava, and please do call me anytime. I'd love to have a conversation how we can support. Great. But to all the other panelists. Greg, don't call me anymore, but the other two can. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> I'm just going to give your cell phone out no, right now. <laughs> right. But please, Nikki, Terry, anytime you need any support for us, from us uh, for these programs, we're happy to do it. I have a question. Yeah, and that's, for go everyone. ahead. I'm a veteran, and I have an idea. I have a business. I have a service. What is my best first step or what is my best first organization to go to to then leverage the rest of the resources if you're in florida veterans florida honestly if you know of then if not the sbdc um, uh, there's one good thing about the state of florida is that we we like to say yes and we like to collaborate right so uh in comparison to other states so you're going to get the, the right help in the right direction I, I I was going to say, even if you're not in Florida, come to Florida and contact Veterans Florida <laughs> because, <laughs> because uh, your your opportunity for success for your business is probably higher here. Your cost of doing business is going to be lower here uh, and your uh, military environment and the opportunities for different places to live that you can tap into Veterans Networks and, and different parts of the veteran uh, world in Florida is huge. Um, and it's going to be, a, you're, you're going to have a you know, pick what, what part of the state do you want to live in? There's a military uh, community in that part. Um, so you, uh, you, you can have a lot of different uh, opportunities there uh, to tap into the kind of environment that uh, I think you would be looking for and will probably uh, be successful in. 
Well, we, uh, we certainly like to be uh, the connecting tissue on a lot of relationships here. Uh, I, I can confidently say if, if you go to VEI or an organization, another training partner in our network, you'll find out about everybody. Uh, if you if you contact the Florida SBDC through Greg's uh, Greg first, you'll find out about everybody. You come to us, you're going to find out about everybody. So that's uh, to back to what Raphael was talking about. The collaboration throughout the state uh, is is really incredible. We you know we uh, at Veterans Florida we have we have cohort training partners all over the state that are doing startup training, growth training. We have uh, several other additional partners around the state who plus that up uh, with workshops and networking. Um, so we support all those activities through the state dollars that, that we receive each year. Um, and the partners uh, like VEI and others uh, are, just do a great job of uh, providing mentorship and resources at the local level. Um, and uh, so we, we try to support them. They support our overall mission. Um, and we get everybody together each year at the end of the fiscal year for us, which is in June at our expo. So we'll be putting word out about that uh, soon. It will be in the Tampa Bay area. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we've, what, what happens here in Florida just does not happen in any other state. Sure, California is bigger, Texas is bigger, but this, this veteran entrepreneurship network um, you know, there's really no one head of this beast. It's, it's, a, it's all truly a collaboration and we all, uh, we all support each other. And, and we, we see a lot of the same faces and names because we were just all so connected very well. Um, and it's all about the veteran small business. And that's why we're doing this, this panel today during this week. Um, so with that, I am going to uh, promote our co-working link one more time. That is Veterans Florida, <clears throat> excuse me, veteransflorida.org slash coworking. And again, this is for veterans who are uh, currently at a coworking location or are interested in knowing what coworking locations across the state can offer. Uh, we will pay the, the, the facility uh, $2,000 towards your membership. Um, so depending on what features you select at that co-working location, you know, that could be anywhere from six or more months, depending on, on what services. So uh, uh, we are accepting applications now. The application link is live. So again, if you are at a co-working or are interested at a local co-working, uh, try to connect with them and, and uh, uh, get the information that you'll need for your, for your uh, online application, and then we'll continue moving that forward. We're gonna keep that window open until the end of this calendar year. Um, so go ahead and get those uh, entries in uh, as soon as you can, if you are interested. And I wanna thank all the attendees, uh, some, some really good questions. We're gonna to try to uh, continue answering those. We will uh, probably even have uh, an FAQ section on the, uh, the, the closeout email that we send. We'll have everyone's um, presentations and contact information. And certainly want to thank all the panelists. Uh, what, a, what an incredible group um, and uh, uh, information that was provided by everybody here. And hopefully everybody on uh, who's watching or will be watching um, really gets a, a, a feel for just how dedicated folks in Florida are to making veterans uh, a small businesses work. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Yep. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate Thank you, Joe. It.